Hey friends, welcome back. If you're new here, we are the Code League YouTube channel where we create real-world project-based tutorials to teach you how to code. If that sounds interesting, consider subscribing this channel and turning on the notifications. And in this tutorial, we are going to build this awesome New Year Countdown project. And as you can see, we have a background image in this project and over that background image we have a dark overlay and that's why this image is more darker than it should be and then we have this heading which says 2021 countdown because this project is for the countdown of the new year 2021 and below this you can see that we have the number of days which is 218 and then 18 hours and then 29 minutes and then these are the seconds which are constantly updating. So apparently there are 218 days, 18 hours, 28 minutes and 47 seconds left for the new year 2021. So that's the project that we are going to build and let's flip to VS Code to start our project. So inside VS Code you can see that I have already created three files. The first one is index.html, the second is style.css and the third is script.js and I also have an images folder and inside this folder I have my background image and link to this image will be attached to the description so if you want to follow along this project and want to download this image you can find the link to the description of this video with that being said let's open our index.html file and start coding so first of all I'll use this symbol and then press the enter key to get the default code for the HTML and I'm going to change the title to 2021 countdown and then inside the body tag I'm going to use an h1 tag and the text is going to be 2021 countdown after that I'm going to use a diff with a ID and class of container so this is the class container and I'm also going to give an ID of container to this div and then inside this div I'm going to have another div which is going to be a nested div with a class of counter and then I'm going to have an h2 with an id of days and then I'm going to have a small tag and inside this tag I'm going to write days so as you can see from our project, this text is generated statically while these values which are coming from JavaScript are generated dynamically. So all these values are calculated from JavaScript dynamically while this text is static. And this heading is also static so I'm writing this in my HTML. And I also need to move this small tag out of this H2 because it shouldn't go here. And now I'm going to copy this div and paste it just below it and change this days ID to hours. And then I'm also going to update this text to hours as well. So this is the area for hours. And now I just need to copy and paste this again. So this time I'm going to change this hours to minutes. And then this text is also going to change to minutes. And then copy and paste this div again. And lastly, we need the ID to be seconds. And then the text is also going to be seconds. So as you can see right now, we don't have any value inside the H2 tag. And that's because we will be generating all those values dynamically through JavaScript. And finally, I need to link my script so I'm going to set the source to script.js. So this is my JavaScript file that I need, need to link with. And in this upper section, I also need to link my style sheet. So I'm going to use link tag and I'm going to set the href to style.css. So that's it for our HTML file. Let's move on to our CSS now. And I'm also going to open this project in the browser so that you can see all the changes side by side 
and I'm going to open it by using my live server extension so as you can see we have this text right now and obviously we need to style it right now so I have opened this project in the browser side by side and you can see it's running in this IP address and port number and this port is also available here due to the live server extension so now you'll be able to see all the changes happening through CSS side by side so first of all I'm going to target everything and I'm going to set the box sizing to border box and then I'm going to target the body tag and set the background image and set the URL to images because that's the name of my folder and then the name of image is bg.jpg so as you can see we got our background image now and then I'm going to set the background repeat to no repeat so that the image will not repeat itself and then I'm going to set the background size to cover and then I'm going to set the background position to center and then again center and I'm going to set the height to 100 VH and the color is going to be white and then I'm going to set the font family to sans serif and then I am need to display using the flex box so I'm going to set it to flex and then the direction of the flex will be column and then I'm going to align the items to center and then I need to justify content to center as well so now you can see everything is centered both horizontally and vertically so obviously this text is not clearly visible but we'll add some dark overlay to our image so this text become more visible and then I'm also going to set the text align to center and then I'm going to set the margin to zero and set the overflow to hidden and now I'm going to add a dark overlay so I'm going to target the body and after effect and I'm going to set the content to empty and then I'm going to set the position to absolute and then I'm going to set the top to zero and left is also going to be zero and then the width sh should be 100% and the height is also going to be 100% and the background color is going to be RGBA and for red I'm going to use zero and for the green I'm going to use zero and for blue it's going to be zero as well and for alpha it's going to be 0 0.3 so this will reduce the brightness of my background image so if you further increase this value the brightness of your background image will be reduced as well and then I'm going to target the body and steric and I'm going to set the Z index to 1 because right now you can see that my text is not clearly visible and I need it to be white and I need this text to come at the top of my dark overlay so if I add the Z index to 1 my text will come at the top of this dark overlay so now you can see that the dark overlay is just covering this image and not this text and then I'm going to target the h1 tag and set the font size to 100 pixel and then I'm going to set the margin to 200 pixels and then 0 and 40 pixels and then I'm going to target the container class and set the display to flex and transform with a scale of 2 so this will increase my text as you can see the size of text is increased next I'm going to target the counter class and set the display to flex again and the flex direction is going to be column and I'm going to align the items to center 
and I'm going to set the justify content to center as well and then I'm going to set the margin to 15 pixels and finally I'm going to target the counter class as well as the h2 tag and just set the margin to 0, 0 and 5 pixels so that's it for our CSS file and as you can see our layout is perfectly styled now and now we just need to add the countdown values from our JavaScript so let's go to JavaScript file so first of all we need the reference of all the seconds minutes hours and days so that's why I'm going to start with a seconds variable which will have the reference for seconds from the DOM so I'm going to target the document dot get element by id and then i'm going to target the seconds so now i have the hold of seconds from the html and similarly i'm going to copy and paste this four times because i need the reference for minutes and i'm also going to replace this with minutes and then i need the reference of hours and i'm going to copy hours and paste it here and finally I need the reference of days so copy this days at here as well and now I need a reference to the container tag in the HTML so I'm going to use the document dot get element by ID and pass in the container and then I need to get the value of my current year so at the time of recording this video the current year is 2020 so in order to get that value dynamically I need to have a variable which I'm going to call current year and feel free to call it anything and the way we can get it is by using this new keyword and then the date method and then call the get full year method so this line of code will give me the current year which is 2020 and then I'm going to have another variable called time next year so basically this variable will have the value of the whole time for the next year and the way we can get it by using date and pass in and then I need to use the template literals remember the, I'm using these back ticks and not the double quotes or single quotes so I'm going to write January 01 because that's the date of my next year so I need the year as well which I can get from this current year value so I can copy and paste it here so because the value of current year is 2020 and I need the value for the next year which is 2021 so I'm going to add 1 to it. So whenever you want the value for next year you can simply use the current year and add 1 to it. So that's why I'm using current year plus 1. And then the, for the time it's going to be 00, zero for the hours. 0 0 for the minutes and 0 0 for the seconds so that's the whole value for the time of the next year and now we need to create the function that we can call to update all these values which are obviously not visible but we want a function to update all the values after every second and I'm going to call this function update container and this is going to have a variable of time now and this new date keyword will give me the value for the current time and then I need a variable called result so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this time next year variable and then I'm going to subtract time now with it so basically now I have the difference of the current time with the time of the next year so when I have the difference I can exactly display all the days hours minutes and seconds left to that year so because of this difference I can now calculate my seconds so I'm going to call this seconds 
s and then I'm going to use the math.flow function and pass in the result so rem remember that the result is the difference between the current time and the time of the next year because that's what we need to calculate how many seconds are left for the new year now as the value of this result is in milliseconds so that's why I'm going to divide this by thousand because I want the value to be in seconds and not in milliseconds so this will give me the value in seconds and then I need to take a mod with 60 so now this whole line will give me the exact seconds left for the next year which I can display at this position so similarly I'm going to copy and paste this and now I need to calculate the minutes and for minutes I'm going to divide this by 60 because there are 60 seconds in a minute so I need to divide it by 60 to get the minutes similarly I'm going to copy this and paste it here and this time I'm going to change it to hours so that's why I'm going to use H alphabet and now I'm going to further divide it by 60 because there are 60 minutes and in an hour so I need to further divide it by 60 to get the number of hours and another thing that I need to do is I need to replace the 60 with 24 because there are 24 hours in a day and that's why I need to take the mod with the value of 24 and lastly I'm going to copy and paste it this again and this time I need the day so I'm going to use the D alphabet and now instead of taking the modulus I just need to divide it by 24 because there are 24 hours in a day so I need to divide it by 24 so that's how I can get the days so now I have all the values that I need to populate or display in this browser so in order to add all these values to, to the DOM what I can do is I can call the seconds dot inner html and then I can set this to s so remember this second is same as this seconds that we got over here so as we already got the reference of the seconds from the DOM we can simply update it by calling the inner html and then setting it to the value of s which we just calculated above so similarly I'm going to do this for everything for minutes for hours and days and change this to minutes and then this s should be m and I'm going to change this to hours and then this s should be changed to h and finally I'm going to change it to days and change this s to d and now you can see we have all the codes set up for updating our countdown but there's one problem that you, you still can't see the time and the reason is that we need to call this function and we need to call this function for every second so basically we want to run this function every second so that the time is updated every second on the browser and the way we can do is we can use the set interval function which is used to call a function periodically after a set interval of time so the function that I need to call is the update container so this is the same function which we have just created and then I just need to provide the time that it should call itself so I want it to call itself after every second so I'm going to use the 1000 values which means one second so 1000 here represents 1000 milliseconds which means one second as 1000 milliseconds equal one second so that's it for our JavaScript file and our project is fully completed so now we can see that our application is working perfectly fine and you can see the seconds is updating after each second and when this seconds reaches zero the minute will also be decreased and as you can see the minutes has also decreased so our application is working perfectly fine so that's it if you found this video useful consider leaving it a like comment and subscribing this channel this will push us to bring more project based tutorials for you guys thank you for watching bye bye